Hello, Wonder Hussy here. And yes, I know I wore this same cheesy Indiana Jones Tomb Raider outfit in my last video. And I normally don't like to wear the same thing twice. But I'm on my way to go hiking in Death Valley. <laughs> and I'm bringing a friend with me. I'm on my way to pick her up now. And when you see what she's wearing, <laughs> well, you'll understand why I'm wearing this again. It's Jenny! Hi everybody! <laughs> Hi Jenny. Hi Sarah. You might remember Jenny from, uh, what did we do? D Desolation Canyon yes, hike together? Yes, Desolation Canyon. Well, in the meantime, Jenny got this fabulous pith helmet. <laughs> She's a real safari gal now. Sort and of. that's why I had to wear my Indiana Jones outfit. You look great. Well, thank you. So we can match. Okay, Jenny, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Let's go. My first cabin. <laughs> Ooh, I haven't even announced where we're going yet, but oh, okay, sorry. Jenny, <laughs> way to spill the beans. We are going to hike to an abandoned mine and cabin in Death Valley. Woo! <laughs> Alright Jenny, you ready? I'm so ready. Let's go! Okay, so the cabin we're hiking to and the mine is called the Lemoyne Mine and the Lemoyne Cabin. L-E-M-O-I-G-N-E. -E. I guess it's named after, a, I think, a French guy uh, that was mining. Oh gosh, I already forgot. Gold and silver out here. And he built this little cabin back in 1890. And well, I guess up until 1994, you could actually drive all the way up to it. But then when they closed all them off-road routes here in Death Valley in 1994, this all became part of a wilderness area. And so now you got to park down at the end of the road and hike the rest of the way, the old fashioned way on foot. But it's only about a little over three miles each way. So should be a pretty easy, straightforward hike with some pretty interesting stuff at the end. Okay, Jenny's shooting footage of the road closed wilderness area. This is the boundary past which you can't drive any further anymore. But somebody has very kindly built this arrow out of rocks to indicate the right way up this canyon. Technically, I could have driven farther, I guess, all the way to the wilderness boundary sign, but I don't know. The road was pretty rough and I just felt like I'd rather just hike a little bit extra than needlessly beat up the undercarriage of my car, which if you've ever been under my car, whoo, you know it's already beleaguered. Jenny's so cute in that little pith helmet. She looks like Dora the Explorer. Ooh, this canyon is starting to narrow. Look at that. It's nice and shady, which is a huge blessing because, oh my gosh, it was hot back there in the sun. I mean, today's November 29th, November 29th, but we're in Death Valley and gosh, I don't remember what my car said, but it's hot. I'll tell you one thing though, you wouldn't want to be in this canyon in a flash flood because you can see how the water has just carved away the canyon walls. So they're curved like that. And then look over here. All these almost kind of like cave formations. <laughs> really interesting. I don't know much about geology, but look at, look at this. That's beautiful. All the colors in these rocks. I mean, holy moly, look at this. <laughs> wow, that's like, a psychedelic tie-dye. Wow, Mother Nature is a trip. 
Oh yeah, here you can really see that <laughs> during a flash flood, there's probably a waterfall coming down here. I mean, look how the water has worn this rock pretty smooth coming over the edge. Definitely don't do this hike if there are any clouds anywhere in the sky. <laughs> Okay, we must be getting close because I'm seeing a lot of metal detritus in the wash. This has been a tough hike. You gain about 2,000 feet in elevation over hmm, just over three miles. So it's rough. It's not easy to get up here. And this guy, Jean Lemoyne, who built this cabin, <laughs> they didn't have Jeeps back in 1890. He had to hike up here himself with all his stuff on a mule, you know? It's important to think about that as I'm huffing and puffing, <laughs> carrying my heavy backpack and camera. <laughs> this Lemoyne dude must have been hardcore. I mean, I guess the closest, I don't even know what the closest settlement back then would have been. We're not that far from Stovepipe Wells. So maybe he had to go all the way down to Stovepipe Wells to get supplies and then lug them all the way up the canyon on the back of his mule. Oh, oh wow, look. I think that might be one of his mine addits. Uh, I don't have a ton of daylight, but I'll hike up and check it out just because I'm waiting for Jenny to catch up anyways. <laughs> I think this hike did a number on Jenny. <laughs> so while we're waiting for her to catch up. Oh, wow, look, a tarantula burrow. <laughs> now who has ADHD? Oh uh, gosh, let me turn my flash on. Hi, feather. I don't know if you can even see him in there. Maybe you can, you can see his leg poking out. I don't want to antagonize you, but I really would sure like to see you. I don't know, is it like bad form to poke at it with a little twig? I'm not gonna hurt it. I just think it'd be cool to see his little leg. Hi, Banner, come on, come on out. We want to see you. Come on, mister, come on. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> he is not coming out. <laughs> can you even see him? Yikes. Sorry, feller. Okay, let's go in this attic. Oh! <laughs> Man, what if I got all the way to this attic and there was a giant tarantula living in here, only scaled to size. Ah! <laughs> can you imagine? Oh, good, I can see Jenny coming down the wash there. See, this little detour was good for something. If only to give her a chance to catch up. All right, I see it. Although you might not have been able to because the sun is right behind it. And also, what I see, I think isn't actually Lemoyne's cabin. There's another cabin up here that was built much more recently, I think in the 1960s. And I think that's what I'm looking at. But either way, I'm looking forward to poking around inside both cabins anyways. Woo wee! Always love seeing one of those signs because that means there's sure to be interesting stuff up ahead. Gosh, let's just take a minute and appreciate how desolate we are. That's the way we came from the car. In the very, very distance, zoom in there, you can see the valley floor down there. And that's where like the mesquite sand dunes and stovepipe wells are. We are way in the middle of nowhere. Okay, wow, I can tell right off the bat, this cabin's probably not gonna be in too good of a shape because you can see there's no windows, part of the wall's missing. <laughs> the elements have just gone rip-roaring right through it. And then next to it there, that's Lemoyne's original cabin. And then over there, it looks like that used to be the outhouse. Let's check out Lemoyne's cabin first. Okay, so like I was saying earlier, this guy, Jean Lemoyne, built this in 1890. <laughs> and you can tell it's old. I mean, 
He built it out of, well, I guess there must have been trees in the area that he somehow cut down the trunks of the branches from and used those to frame it out. And then he kind of dug it into the back of the hillside here, you can see. So the back wall, I guess, was just rock and dirt. Side wall was kind of rock and dirt, and then he had frame over it and then this tin siding, which if you look at it, I guess these are just flattened out old I don't know, barrels or gas cans or something. He painstakingly hammered them all out flat and then nailed them all over to the outside of the cabin. And then the roof is corrugated metal too. No telling where he got that from. Look at that. Kind of cozy built right into the side of the hill like that. And they even had a window. <laughs> Fancy. Looks like there's some stuff collected here that people have found in the area, like these amazing old time boots. Oh my goodness. These are so fun, funky. It's interesting how these old boots always curl up like that with age, I guess, because they're rubber sole. Oh, wow, look at that. Hobnail boots. Wow, the stories these boots could tell. Old metal hinge from a door, I guess. Pipe fitting, spring. Not much left here at the old Lemoyne cabin. In fact, it's, well, half collapsed, but you can see he did have a little stove pipe. So he stayed warm in the winter. Looks like somebody dragged an old car seat in there. So he had something to sit on or whoever brought it in here had something to sit on. I mean, again, Lemoyne built this in 1890. So there weren't any such thing as automobile seats. So golly, he probably didn't have anything soft to sit on. I mean, if you stop and think about it, these historic Death Valley prospectors had a really hard life. I mean, not only did he have to lug all his supplies up and down that canyon on burrow back, but then he came home to this rock cabin and he didn't even have a chair to sit in. You know, I bet you anything, he just sat on the ground. He probably hollowed out a little depression in the earth and sat there by his fire and ate his beans. And gosh, I wonder how he got by because it's not like you could really raise a garden here or nothing that could sustain you. I mean, you can see it's pretty barren, rocky terrain, a few Joshua trees and some scrubby bushes, and that's about it. And judging from the size of this <laughs> trash pile, all these cans, I guess he lived off canned goods. But if that's the case, golly, I mean, cans are heavy. How many times a month, a week, <laughs> Did he go all the way down to stove pipe walls? I mean, it must have taken two days just to get there and back. Log all these heavy cans of food? Hmm, now I'm curious. Anyway, I can see Jenny way down there in the distance. She's catching up, slowly but surely. So while we wait for her, let's do some more exploring. Okay, one last look at little Lemoyne's cabin here before we move on to the fancy new digs up the hill. Now, like I said, I think this building was built sometime in the 1960s, I guess, when you could still uh, drive a Jeep up here. So I don't know what the purpose of it ever was, but huh? maybe if we poke around inside, we'll find some clues. Well, it looks like the door's over there, but you know, there is a hole in the wall here. So we might as well just climb through that. <laughs> okay, here we are in the busted old, well, not the Lemoyne cabin, but the other cabin in Lemoyne Canyon. And there's a lot to look at in here. Okay, I guess we'll just start here to the right where we crawled through the window or the wall. Looks like there was one, two, three beds here at one time. Oh, it looks like there was a really fancy linoleum, well, linoleum flooring, I guess, at some point. A little chaise lounge. This looks like stuff campers brought up here over the years. You know, I'm guessing this was one of those adopted cabins at some point, but golly. I guess once they shut the road down, people were too lazy to hike up here and, well, they quit maintaining it and people quit visiting it as much. <laughs> Look, Circus Circus Las Vegas. Oh my god, everything in here is so dirty and there's probably like a thousand snakes under everything. No, just kidding, it's too cold for snakes. Oh, what's this? Two policemen lead Joyce Matthews to an ambulance after she slashed her wrists in the bathroom of Billy Zigfield Theater apartment. Wow, what is this? Nice guys, finish last. Billy Rose always came in first. Oh my goodness. Old wash basin. Oh wow, look at this really cool old stove. This is neat. Oh look, a log book. <laughs> Covered in poop. Lemoyne mine cabin. Definitely gonna sign that before I leave. Just see if there's anything in the oven. I doubt it. No. Oh look, another old shoe. Oh, how cute. 
Well, at, when this was a volunteer cabin, you could have washed your dishes here. You could have had a swig of wine out of the old jug. Oh my goodness, it looks like there probably were supplies laid in here at one time. Salt, spices, uh, some aluminum foil, <laughs> a really old thing of honey, some Dixie cups. Oh, look, there is still a full can of chili and a full can of green giant, oh, what are those, like green beans? If you had to, you could probably survive on what's in those cans. I bet they're still pretty good. And look, even some popcorn. Fancy. Adhesive bandage. Oh, it's like a first aid supply. Oh, and really old Hershey's cocoa tin. Oh, there's still cocoa in it. I guess I should put it back up on the shelf. Can't imagine that it's gonna stay up here. The next windstorm will probably blow everything back down. Old fork, some, well, was cheese whiz. Now it looks like baking soda or sugar or something. I guess I could put that up here too. Oh, why not? I can't help it. I'm a Virgo, I'll tidy up a bit. Some aspirin. Oh, you know what? I should put the aspirin by the bandage for the first aid section. Matter of fact, might as well add this crusty old tube of chapstick to the mess. Ugh. You made it! Jenny's here! Congratulations, Jenny! Oh, I had oh no, Jenny told me that she actually got really sick on the way up here. Jenny! Yeah. That's heat stuff, right? You got heat stroke? Is that heat stroke? I vomited. Did. Well, I know that last time I saw you up close, you were very flushed. Your face. I was super red. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I was like, oh, I'm going to get sick. And then I, I got to the shade and I laid down oh, for good. a little Smart. bit. And yeah. that's when I realized we need walkie talkies when we hike. Because oh, yeah. you're just in much better. She's in much better shape than I am. <laughs> I'll get there. That's okay. You made it though. But, uh, but yeah. I'm definitely. impressed. Your willpower is strong. And now we're up here in the shade. You can take a break. Yeah. Have chill some out. water. A good yeah. fruit. And we're just and going downhill neat. the rest of the way, so it'll be easy. Oh man, I feel terrible. Not many can keep up with me hiking, I guess. Okay, let's go back in and finish <laughs> around in this old cabin. What's this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Henry's fork vest. Ooh, yeah. Look at these models. <laughs> uh, oh, it's a Cabela's catalog. Oh my gosh, look. From what year though? Oh my goodness. Well, I don't know. It's missing the cover, but you can tell it's probably from like the uh, 1980s. Or how about this? What's this? Man, there was a lot of reading materials in this cabin. October 1984. The Atlantic Monthly. Oh my goodness, there was some highbrow folk up here. You never know though. The same guy who had that Cabela's catalog probably had that uh, Atlantic Monthly. <laughs> you can never pigeonhole people. Why can't we have a dumb old mascot like any other team? Oh, Heathcliff, I guess he's their mascot. I don't know, I was always more of a Garfield fan personally. Oh, an old newspaper. Oh, look how much fun. Monday, July 17th, 1995, the Las Vegas Review Journal. Wow, 95. Oh, look, hair club for men, baseball. NFL teams resume chase of 49ers Dallas. Uh, back in the day when the 49ers was a good team. Uh, former President George Bush presents inductee Chris Everett with her enshrinement certificate at the International Tennis Hall of Fame. 1995, those were the days. Gosh, remember back in 1995, everybody used to complain about how bad things were? <laughs> Little did we know how, <laughs> well, I was gonna say how much worse they'd become, but hey, looking around me here, I guess things are still pretty darn cool. Okay, let's take a look at some of the graffiti that's all over these walls. God must live here when no one else is around. Del High 4x4 Mudslingers. Bob slept here and slept well. <laughs> Drove up at night, more interesting that way. Henry Steele, summer solstice 1980, wow. A business card for somebody named Roger C. Bloom, captain with Northwest Airlines. Oh, I wonder if he still flies. If you're watching, hi Roger. Wow, some of this is really old though. Look at this one. December 31st, 1974, snow five inches deep and a cold wind. When it became apparent that our 1963 Land Rover station wagon could not negotiate this road in four-wheel drive, low range, we decided to walk the last five miles. Yes, on foot, and we did. Beat that, you two-wheel drive punits, and quit tearing our desert up by driving off the roads. Or how about this one? A peach looks good with lots of fuzz, but man's no peach and never was. 21 March, 1976. Uh, I'm not sure what they mean by that, but I'm pretty sure they wouldn't be down with what's going on here. 
March 16th, 1977, 72 Toyota LC, Land Cruiser, I guess, the Hippo Gator. Arrived here in 1959, VW bus, stock 1990 Cherokee Limited with Jeep off-road kit, blah, blah, blah. Okay, here's a really interesting bit of graffiti. So it starts out by some guy going, Surprise Canyon is easy. Did it with a trailer in tow. And this guy goes, So what? I did it in a stolen police car. It's still up there behind the mill. And then this guy goes, If you think Surprise Canyon is tough, try Half Dome. I did it in a school bus. <laughs> I love that because it kind of seems like they're taking the piss out of each other uh, for bragging about, Oh, well, I did this in this kind of car. And I, you know, everybody's bragging about what kind of car they did this in. <laughs> I did this on my two footsies. Who needs Jenny Craig? Hike Death Valley. Okay, now it's the time for us to finally look inside the logbook. Lemoyne Mine Cabin. Property of Death Valley National Park. Oh. April 19th, 2021. First time up here in over a decade. Headed up to the mines next. Somebody who works for the Park Service. So this is a brand new book that he put in and well, he didn't leave a pen behind. Oh, how am I supposed to sign this log book? Okay, surely in all this mess in here, there's gonna be something, some stub of charcoal or something I can use to leave my mark. Let's see. Oh, look. It's one of those mechanical pencils. Let's see if there's any lead left in it. Oh, there is, awesome. Now I can sign the book. All right, so I wrote, first time here, tough hike, but totally worth it. Too bad the cabin is in such bad shape. I can imagine how nice it must have been back in the day. R.I.P. Jean Lemoyne. And then I'll put this pencil back in the bag with the logbook so Jenny can write an entry of her own because I'm sure she has plenty to say. Looks like he did have a fireplace here at one time. Or whoever built this cabin had a fireplace here. I guess this wasn't Lemoyne. This was, who knows? I don't know anything about the history of this cabin. Yeah, because he died in uh, 1918. Oh, he died in 1918, okay. Yeah, so it definitely wasn't anything to do with him. Probably just a cozy little backcountry cabin where people would, you know, camp out. Oh, look, there is a bottle of water over here. I just noticed that's cool. Like if you really needed it, emergency water. Okay, while Jenny's poking around in there, we'll go check around the front door or back door. I don't know. There's a door over there too. Maybe that was the front door. Look at all these barrels and tanks back here. My goodness. Okay, well, it's definitely not a fancy front doorstep or anything like that. And then nothing really out back. This canyon just kind of dead ends here. Bunch of broken glass. I guess that came out of the windows. Looks like somebody maybe had a campfire here. Ooh, and a campfire actually sounds amazing right now because once the sun went down behind that uh, mountain, it got really cold. <laughs> you know, especially because my back is all sweaty from hiking up here. And I mean, I was, well, you heard Jenny. She was like, he almost had heat stroke. It was hot on the way up. But, that's Death Valley, man. It's a land of extremes. It'll be blazing hot one minute and freezing cold the next. So that's why it's important that we don't stay up in this canyon too long because it's winter time. The days are short. It's already like three o'clock. It gets dark at 4.30. So we probably need to start thinking about hiking back down already. Hopefully we make it down in one piece. <laughs> Hopefully I don't uh, kill poor Jenny. Well, it sucks that after all that tough hike that this wasn't even that exciting of a cabin. But, but I was still excited because it is my first cabin and I made it because I was nervous I might die on the way up when Sarah wouldn't know until she came back. Oh, well. But God, you know, loves me. made it and not a moment too soon uh we got back to the car with barely any daylight left and then <sighs> following the road out of there was a nightmare because it's a road in the loosest sense of the well in the loosest sense of the word and gosh it was really hard to follow thankfully jenny had a little flashlight and she kind of helped me and well we made it <laughs> the paved road is right here no harm no foul uh jenny's sitting in the car there waiting for me she said she would still go hiking with me again, even after... Well, let me put it to you this way. 
Apparently Jenny's video of this hike is gonna be completely different from my version. So if you're interested in seeing two very different viewpoints of the same day, check out Jenny's video. I'll put a link to her channel up here. But check her out, subscribe, like the video, do what you can, she's a good person, she deserves it. I'm just happy to be back on the pavement. I'm gonna get in the car and turn on the heater because it's cold and I'm hungry and I just wanna get home. But don't worry, I'm still not scared off from having future adventures in Death Valley. And I'm not scared off from having future adventures with Jenny. <laughs> Although she might be scared off from having future adventures with me.